Exciting news because today I am releasing a new plugin for DaVinci Resolve Master Tracker. Locked on stabilization effects, tracked text, tracked images, tracked video, it's all in here. And even more exciting news, if you are watching this video uh, close to launch, we'll get to that in a little bit. But if you follow the link in the description, you'll get to the store page for Master Tracker. Once you have downloaded that, you'll have this DRFX, just double click to install that in Resolve and then in your effects library under Sterling Supply Co, you will have Master Tracker. I've got some uh, video examples to demonstrate on, let's get started. Now, this is a generator, so when I drag it to my timeline, it will exist on its own track, but it will apply that track to whatever is below it on the timeline. In the inspector, you have all the necessary controls, um, starting with this effect dropdown. We're gonna look at this first one, locked on stabilization. After that, we have a media source and source controls. Those are for like, if you're tracking text or images or video, we'll get to those later. But then you have effect controls and we're looking at locked on controls first. Now in my viewer, we have this little dropdown menu that I actually just did a whole video on. If you haven't seen that, I'm gonna drop down and come to fusion overlay. Once we do that, we see we have a few different tracking points pop up and you want to find the one that correlates with the effect you want to use. So I'm gonna to come to the beginning of my clip, go to this locked on tracker, click this corner and drag over. Now it's a little hit or miss. We're doing some interesting stuff, bringing uh, fusion effects over to the edit page. So sometimes when you drag this, you will get that regular like zoom in view that you would be used to on the fusion page. Not always for me now, I'm not getting that. So you can sort of, it's a, a little guess, but you can sort of, you know, move this around until that center is exactly where you want to track. And then in this locked on controls, I'm going to track forward. It won't display anything in frame, but if you sort of move your mouse back and forth, um, you'll see it moving and then it'll get a pop-up saying it's done. Cool. I will click. Okay. And if we scale out, we'll see something interesting has happened because we now have a duplicate of our footage that has been shifted. And if we play, we'll see a, a few things are happening. That whole footage is now sliding, but it is sliding because it has shifted the footage to say perfectly locked on to this one person. And then I guess their hat. But in the effect controls, we have user position, scale, and rotation. So if I just pull up this scale quite a bit, then now, we have this really great locked on stabilization effect following this woman walking forward and stumbling. Boom, locked on stabilization, super cool effect. Let's keep moving. I'm gonna drag a fresh copy over this second clip we have where we're just, you know, a drone shot back out from this cool mural. And in my settings, I'm gonna change this to track and keep that media source as text. With that set on track, media source text, uh, in our source controls, we have a few master transform controls, which we'll talk about more in a bit, but then we have text controls. Now this will, might be a little finicky if you're just browsing because um, this text is not currently tracked into the scene, so it doesn't super know what it's supposed to show you, um, but you can change this to um, whatever you want, like subscribe. And you might see that in there. Cool. Then you just have a few basic options. You also have scale here under text, um, and that should come before any of these transform options. Uh, but now, um, remember, we have separate controls for that under effects as well. So under track, I want to find this track tracker in my scene. Come to the beginning of this clip. I will just drag this again. We're not getting that pop up now, but that's okay. I'm gonna drag this right to this sort of intersection on the on the wall. That should be all right. And now if I track forward, it'll do its thing. Should wrap up pretty quick, it does. And now you see this text is moving along with our scene, um, but because of its distance from that original track point, it doesn't look super great, um, but we can change those master source controls. I can scale down the text as well, um, just because remember we tracked this point little right here. And especially if I toggle off that overlay, we have that text just stuck right to that point as it scales back. Again, this is just a single point track, so it's not, you know, like properly scaling like it was in 3D space, uh, but we do have something for that coming a little bit later. But now that we have run that tracking data, we can use that effect with different sources. If I come back to the, my media pool, um, I have this just this DaVinci Resolve logo, and if I change this over from media source to drop down, oh no, media offline, that's okay. In my source controls, underneath text, we have media controls. And uh, we have a uh, clip function where you can search anywhere on your computer for an image to bring in, or we have this uh, clip name area, and this is this drop zone. So I can just drop this Resolve logo from my media pool in there. Um, I will scale that back down a bit. And now that is being operated on with the exact same move we tracked previously. Again, with the zoom, it's a little trippy. So let's uh, go and just do the process again on this another clip. I have generators, master tracker. I'll make sure the boat's a little closer. Yeah, maybe not until it goes out of the way. I am doing a track. 
Um, I will go ahead and change this drop zone now, media controls, drop in this logo. And with that viewer selected, I am looking for a track. I will just zoom in, track the very top of this boat. Make sure I am at the beginning of this clip as well. That is great. Oh, we are also zooming past this one, aren't we? I will see how it goes. Effect, track, track forward. That'll do its thing. Done. And now, especially once I scale down this logo, reposition this, it'll be the little SS Resolve tracking perfectly as this rolls along. Very cool. Again, tracking just for as long as this effect is on your timeline. Now there is one big distinction between um, this loader and drop zone function. Again, loader, um, you pull up this browser, search anywhere on your computer for an image, and it does have to be an image. But this drop zone function doesn't have to be an image. If I go in, grab some you know test footage, um, I have this other drone shot. If I select the tracker, drag this drone shot over the clip name, and I will have to reposition this. But now, hey, scale that down, pin that to it a little bit, then now it is tracking a video clip into our scene. And even, let me test this, boom, yes, okay. You can even bring in other Resolve timelines into your scene. So you can like make an animation or do a video or whatever, you don't even have to render that out. Drag that uh, into this drop zone function and track that into another scene. This especially is a very big feature from some of the past tracking plugins I have released. So I'm very happy um, to be including it in this one. Let's talk about the last big feature, and that is in this uh, effect dropdown, we have track stretch. I'm actually going to stretch this clip to match most of this whole uh, clip we have here. So we just have these two people walking together. Let me actually go to about here. So we have them far apart, and then they get close together. Now, if I am uh, let me go ahead and change the source controls to text and we'll just call this love. Cool. I have that effect to track, track stretch. I'm going to open my effect controls for track stretch. And now if I toggle on this viewer overlay, we have track one or we have stretch one and stretch two. I'm going to go to the my beginning of the clip, drop this stretch one right on this person over here and a stretch two on, whoops, I'm not increasing the size of that stretch two on this person over here. Now that has moved the text a little bit, but we haven't run our track yet. I will do that now. So now we are tracking two separate points as they get closer together and you'll see render completed. Okay. Now, if I start playing, it is shorter. It is sort of, you know, shrinking this text as it gets between them. Oh, it looks like it did stop. Oh, my track might've actually stalled for a bit, or maybe it just got too small. Interesting. But an important setting here is this reference setting. Now, this is looking at the standard text it is given. So the rule of thumb here, just like on my past one, whenever your text is largest in frame, uh, whether that's at the start or the end, that's what you want to set this reference to so that it isn't, you know, scaling past the point where you're losing resolution. Uh, my text will be largest at the beginning. So I'm doing reference start and then I can come back up onto text. I'm just going to increase the scale a whole lot and then I can change this position a little bit. So now we have this love going down to love. It even rotates a little bit because he's taller. Isn't that pretty neat? And hey, once again, I can just change this media source after the fact, change that over to a drop zone. Uh, what if this is instead not about love, it is about resolve. Same thing, just kidding. Oh, hey, we do have text here and that is a telltale sign of some uh, caching issues. Ooh, cool. Check this out. I'm in the fusion page. I figured out what's going on. We added this master tracker and then we dragged the back of it backwards to fit our clip. That will be a no, no. This might be something I can also fix um, in the back end or the code or whatever, because while that text generator um, will adjust to fix that, the media in automatically starts at zero or maybe sets at default when you drop it on the timeline. So either, you know, when you bring in your tracker, always, you know, drag it to the start of the clip and then only adjust the end. Or if you are in the situation like I am after the fact, open this up. If you come to this media in, you can just drag that global in and then it will totally do what you want. At this point, it is very large. So we said, this isn't about love, it is about Da Vinci Resolve, which, hey, same thing. There we go. 
Resolve is bringing them together. Okay, lots of tracking effects all on the edit page. Locked on stabilization, uh, tracked uh, text, uh, images, video, um, even with extra scaling and rotation. This is doing a lot of stuff, bringing things over from the Fusion page. Um, extra options seem to be a little hit or miss, like that extra uh, pop in zoom. Sometimes it just shows up for me. Um, if that's something I can narrow down, I will absolutely update this effect. But if you grab this plugin, you will be automatically notified of any future updates. So hey, that's a perk. Now, if you've been following the channel, uh, you might have known uh, the new sort of rhythm we're getting into. This preset is available now and it will be completely free for one week. After that point, it will go behind a small paywall. Um, this is, you know, bringing together a lot of different effects and cool stuff and, you know, knowledge and extra stuff. My past tracking presets will remain free. So if you'd rather, you know, handle a lot of this stuff separately, none of those um, are able to bring in and track a video or other timeline. So, hey, that is a feature exclusive to this version. And of course, I feel totally justified uh, charging for that at that point. But hey, um, if you are one of the people watching this video at launch or in the first few days after launch, hey, go pick up um, a pretty cool tracking preset. If anyone is wondering if this works on the iPad right now, um, the iPad, uh, the cut page on the iPad doesn't have this Fusion overlay, which is essential for this. I really want them to add it. I will probably do a video um, if they add in the future, just talking about all of my new presets that will work on iPad at that point. That's very exciting. This plugin's very exciting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.